Welcome back to another DAX for Power BI tutorial. If you like the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell for more content. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really cool technique that uses linear regression to be able to predict when you're going to reach a certain goal. So if you take a look at what we have on the Power BI report right now, we have this line chart that shows this black line, which is basically the running total of my subscriber count. So YouTube allows us to download data. Um, and as of recording this video, I have 798 subscribers. So this is the data um, as my subscribers have subscribed to the channel. So if we look at the data real quick, we see that we have a certain number of subscribers for every day on here. And if we visualize the running total of that subscriber count, we get this black line. And then using that running total, I was able to use linear regression to create a trend line. And this trend line is used to basically be able to predict when I'll hit a certain goal. And to do that, you only need to calculate the slope of this linear regression line. And this slope is represented by the subs per day card up here. And using that, uh, that slope, you're able to predict how many days it's going to be until you hit a certain goal. So that slope will change as my date range changes. So if I just want to look at like the last month or so, that slope has now changed to 10.61 subs per day because I'm getting a little bit of traction on YouTube, getting more subscribers per day. And we can set a customizable goal here. My big goal is 1,000 subscribers, so I'm 202 subscribers away, which means using this slope of how many I'm gaining per day, that's about 20 days away. But if we want to change this to somewhere around like 5,000 subscribers as my goal, um, so basically I'm 41, 58 subscribers away, that's going to take me over a year to achieve. So this is a pretty cool trick that allows you to do a little bit of predictive analysis using linear regression. Uh, one thing I want to show you is uh, this what, This is pretty cool. If you add a trend line yourself using the analytics pane and you add a trend line, it's actually the exact same line that shows up. So the measure we'll be calculating uh, totally represents the trend line you can uh, use that's baked into Power BI by itself. The difference is that using a measure allows you to calculate the slope and the intercept and all of those things uh, individually, this um, baked in version of the trend line really only allows you to display it. It doesn't allow you to do anything else. So this is pretty cool. Once you change the uh, date range, the trend line uh, matches up with that default trend line. So it's a really cool trick that allows you to uh, basically get the formula of that trend line. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on our fresh Power BI report and I'll show you how to do this. So I've already imported the data I have that same subscriber data in here. I'm going to start by adding a couple of cards. The first card is just going to be the subscriber count. Um, so subscribers will go into this card. And I want the total number of, oh, sorry, I select KPI. So I just want the total number of subscribers. Um, next, I'm going to throw in a line chart that just shows my subscribers over time. Um, oh, that should be in the axis. Subscriber should be in the values. And I don't want a date hierarchy. Okay, so I need to show the running total of these subscribers. So right now this is only showing how many subscribers I've gotten per day. And you can see that it's kind of gone up towards the last month. So I need to create a running total measure. So to do that, I'm gonna come up to subs, right click new measure, and type in, we'll call it running total. And if you've seen my running total video before, it's a pretty simple calculation. It's calculate, taking the sum of the subscribers, and we're filtering that by all subs, where subs date is less than or equal to the max subs date. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close off the filter, close off the calculate. Filter subs, and that looks pretty good. You should come over one. Okay, so that is our running total right there. Um, oh, I was missing the max. So now it's form, for, uh, formatted a little bit 
incorrectly, but that's okay. It'll still work. So if we go ahead and throw in our running total, we can see how many subscribers we've gained in total as we gain, let's say, three a day. We're seeing how that affects the running total. So let's go ahead and get rid of these subscribers because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to do us a favor and set this uh, stroke width to, um, to larger than that because it's a little bit small. So there's our line right now. That, that's our running total. Um, let's go ahead and set up what if analysis. Uh, what if analysis allows us to set that adjustable goal. It's very handy. So I'll go ahead and go to modeling, new parameter. We're going to call this our goal. It's going to be a whole number. And you can set your range that you want your slider to, um, to uh, be. I'm going to set it from 1,000 to let's say my max goal is 10,000. Increments of one with a default of 1,000. And you have this option to add the slicer to the page. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So what this does is it's going to create a new goal table. And this goal table comes with a, uh, a new slicer here, which I'm going to set to single value. And it also provides me with this measure to get the selected value of the slicer. So this goal can vary between 1,000 to 10,000. So I'm going to add a new card. And this new card is going to represent my goal minus my total number of subscribers. So that's going to be how many subscribers I am away from the goal. But actually, first, I'm going to create a measure that's just the goal value. Um, next, I'm actually going to create that measure that shows us the difference. So that's going to be pretty easy. It's just going to be something like, um, I will go ahead and click new measure. We're going to call this goal minus current. And that's going to be something like goal value. Since it's a measure, let's go ahead and get rid of the table name. And that's going to be minus calculate uh, our running total measure. We're going to filter that running total measure to use all of subs because we don't want any filters affecting that running total calculation. And we're going to set the subs date less than or equal to max subs date. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw that in a measure and hopefully that worked. So goal minus current goes in there and we see that, let's make it a little bit easier, 1,000 minus 798 is 202 subscribers away from my goal. So it's working just like we want. So let's get into the real meat of this um, tutorial and that's how to calculate the linear regression. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new measure. I'm gonna come over here to this website that I found. Uh, it's a blog post by Daniel Masliuk and it's an awesome uh, article that shows you how to calculate um, the linear regression yourself in a measure. So he shows a couple of examples here. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and just copy his code for his more, a little more advanced example. They're pretty similar, but I think this example fits our purpose better. So I'm going to go ahead and just straight up copy his code and I'll walk you through what it's doing. It's a really brilliant measure that allows you to calculate this. So he calls it simple linear regression. The first thing he does is he uh, basically creates this variable for a table and he filters for where the basically X and Y data is not blank. Uh, he then goes on to calculate a lot of other vari variables that symbolize um, basically variables in the linear regression calculation. And then in the end, he does all of his division. And I'll walk you through this in just a second, but let's get it working. So basically all we need to do here is um, change these uh, to, I'm gonna use the subs date. This is going to be subs date as well. This is going to be a running total measure. Um, down towards the bottom, this is also going to be subs date. And so is this. So only having to change a little bit of code, we can create that simple linear regression. And we throw that in give it just a second to think about it. And there's our linear regression line that I showed you uh, earlier. So this will vary based on that time range. Let's go ahead and create that slicer for the 
subs date just so I can show you that the time range does matter in its calculation. So it is changing based on the time range to best fit this line here. It's probably easiest if I come to the side. You see that even though the actual subscriber running total does vary, the linear regression cuts straight through it. So that's exactly what we want. So let me go ahead and take us back to the um, the simple linear regression measure and kind of run, uh, run you through what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and import a picture that might help us understand what it's doing. So I have this picture called regression formula. I'll throw that in. And we can take a look at this while we're stepping through the code. Because at first, I'm going to admit, like it was kind of hard for me to understand what was going on here. But once you break it down into um, its steps, it's fairly easy to understand. So this slope formula right here is basically how you calculate the slope in the means of x and y. So if we start with our variable count items, this uh, count items is basically this n right here. It's our count of how many rows we're dealing with. Sum x is the sum of the x. Um, sum x2 is the sum of the x squared. And you can kind of see where all these fall in. So this is sum x, this is sum x squared. We have a sum y, which is represented right here. Sum xy, which is here. Uh, average x and average y. Um, that is going to be, uh, that's basically shortcut for um, sum of x over the count. So if you look at the uh, slope formula, we are then dividing count, which is n times sum xy minus sum x times sum y. So basically the top part of this formula divided by the count items times sum x squared minus sum of x squared. So it basically follows this entire formula right here. Then after you calculate that slope, you are able to calculate the intercept. So it is uh, sum xy minus slope times sum x over the count. So that's where the averages come in. So sum y over the count is the average of y minus the slope times average of x, which is the sum of x uh, divided by the count. That's why you use average. And then finally, when you have the slope and intercept calculated, you're able to do just a quick sum x on the uh, intercept plus slope times substate. So that's basically y equals mx plus b, or here it's a plus bx. A is this intercept, slope is b, and substate is your x-axis. So that's basically how that measure is calculated. And yeah, I do admit it, it does look pretty tough in the beginning, but if you step through it knowing this formula, it's fairly easy to understand how it's working. And it's exactly how Power BI calculates it when you use that analytics pane. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this picture. That's basically what we want to do here. So we're almost done here. Um, we have almost everything we need. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new measure here. It's going to be calculating our slope from the simple linear regression formula. So we'll go ahead and click new measure and we'll use slope. We'll set that equal to uh, the simple linear regression. We don't need uh, all of this code. We only need some of it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy it all, throw it in the slope, paste it. Okay, uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. So we don't need to return this sum x anymore. We don't need the intercept. We just need it to return the slope. So the slope is giving us the number of subscribers per day. So if we go ahead and click enter, we can go ahead and throw slope into a new measure. And we see it is three during that date range, six during that date range. Um, so that looks great. I'm gonna actually create this as a decimal number. Right now it's a whole number. Um, we'll set that as a decimal number with a couple of decimal places. Um, so this is showing us our subscribers per day. And then finally, to get to our final calculation, we want to know how many days it's gonna be until we reach that goal. So we can do that with one more simple measure. So that'll be something like, we'll call that days until goal. And that's simply just our uh, goal minus current. Uh, measure, which is basically how many subscribers we have to go, um, divided by the slope. So that's 
subscribers left divided by subscribers per day gives us how many days we need. So if we go ahead and click OK on that, and just for best practice, I'm going to get rid of this table name, go ahead and click OK, and we throw this into a measure, it's going to show us how many days we have to go. So that was days until goal, throw that in there. We have 31.94 days until we hit that 1,000 subscriber goal. Or if we set this to somewhere like 2,500, we're 212 days away. Uh, a, one more thing we can do is we don't really want partial days here. Um, if it's going to take over 212 days, we want that to round up to 213. So an easy way to do that is by typing in uh, round up. Round up will round the number up to the specified number of digits. We want to specify it as zero uh, decimals. So if we go ahead and click enter, that rounds it up to 213. We can now make that a whole number to make it look a little bit better. And that is our entire Power BI report that we are trying to build here. So as we change our date range and we get a new uh, sample population, we have a new uh, linear regression calculation. That linear regression calculation is able to calculate the slope of subscribers per day. And then we can set a different goal to be able to see how many days it's going to be until we gain that next certain number of subscribers and then output how many days it's going to be. So it's a pretty cool trick that really allows us to do a little bit of predictive analysis. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next Dax Repair BI video.